Hey, I'm Victor Lucas, and I'm here at Nintendo of Canada with my friend Andrew Collins, who is going to tell us all about the big games for the Nintendo Switch this year. But before we do that, we have to pan down, because look at this man. This man is committed. Some of the games that we're going to be talking about are RPGs, <laughs> and he dressed for the occasion. That's incredible, sir. I love this. this RPG is Friday. <laughs> it's RPG Friday. Just another Friday. At exactly. All right, well, let's talk about the launch of this machine. I've already called The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild my favorite game of all time. How how did Nintendo do this? Well, I think it's, it goes back to something that's very important to Nintendo is we don't want to release a game when we don't feel it's ready, that it's not kind of, it's not fully baked and we've got a responsibility to fans to make sure that when we release a game when it's within a franchise such as you know, Super Mario Odyssey or Breath of the Wild, that it has to be the best game that it can be, that it has to be the, a game that the fans will fall in love with. For those type of franchises, we can't release an average game. Yeah. And if that means we delay it, then we delay it. But you know, in this case, we did delay Zelda a couple of times, but look what we came up with. Well, it was a surprise, and I think that's one of the biggest elements of that game's massive success. I'm not alone in calling it the best game ever made. I, you know, Johnny Millennium has said that that's one of his favorite games, if not his favorite game as well. I love it. Uh, but you also had a bunch of other big titles throughout the year. Super Mario Odyssey, actually, you know, sort of one of the other huge ones yeah. this year. But t take us through the, the gamut. What else is launched with this machine? What we did was, again, it goes back to our learning. And we learned that uh, with the Wii U especially, we launched with a lot of software initially. Mm -hmm. And then it went quite quiet for a while. We wanted to make sure we didn't do that with Nintendo Switch. Right. So shortly after launch, we had Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, mm -hmm. which is you know a game that's still, it's still I think it was number 10 in the charts in October, and that's like f six seven months since it came out. Yeah, and a, a reboot of a Wii U game, an awesome and an, and successful Wii U game, but sort of underappreciated for how good it yeah, is. Yeah, I, th I think so. But now finally on Nintendo Switch, people are really appreciating that it is a very very wonderful game and it's kind of it's up there in the, the top three Mario Kart titles and that's you know it's pretty prestigious Absolutely. group to be in mm -hmm. so after that we had arms which was one of the a new IP that we've been working on for a while and mm -hmm. and that's a game which is you know it's been received well it's it's growing in popularity it's a game that we are still updating like even yesterday as I as we're recording we updated it and, and added a new character into it so it's it's like the Splatoon 2 model where we're constantly giving updates Splatoon 2 we just spoke about, that one came out uh, earlier this year, and then obviously we uh, go straight into Super Mario Odyssey, and uh, you know, that's that's a pretty spectacular few months. It's a busy few months for, for gamers and definitely for the staff here in Nintendo. So you've had a lot of success with the AAAs, the big ones, the big titles, but you also have some smaller titles, indie games, you call them Nindies, yeah, nindies. On, on the in, on the eShop. Can you yeah. recommend some, or do some stand out for you? Well, I mean, the. There is, you know, there's tons, there's literally hundreds of games on there now. Mm -hmm. uh, one I like, Stardew Valley, that's kind of a, a nice peaceful game just to, you know, take some time and slow, slow your gaming down, I like that one. Uh, kind of an opposite of that, you've got Axiom Verge, that is uh, hard, <laughs> like really, yes. really hard. Yeah. Uh, you've got Golf Story as well, so who thought you could make an RPG out of a game of golf, but the guys did it. <laughs> so, you know, the, there is a ton of different games out there on the eShop. It's one of the things I like to talk about is that you know, you don't have to spend $80 on, an, on a game on Nintendo Switch to get a fantastic experience. There are really great games on eShop that start at $10 upwards. So, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we're coming up to Christmas. Like, think of it as like, it's a stocking stuffer versus something you put under the tree. Yeah, it was at GDC, I think, before the Switch had launched. Yeah. Um, and I remember that was a big sort of impetus. That was a big... Uh, uh, it was a big effort on Nintendo's part to kind of attract independent developers, and they've come. Yeah, and it's the same uh, same with third party. Is that one of the things we looked at is how can we make things easier for third party developers? Because you know we appreciate that while we you know we look around, we've got the greatest characters, the greatest IP in the world. A console succeeds by having great first party and third party. You know, with third party and with the Nindies, we are we're getting there. We're we're getting some great classic games like Doom, Skyrim, etc. They're all on Nintendo Switch now. So how did that work with Skyrim? Was that something that you partnered up and co-published the game to, to bring it to the Nintendo Switch? Yeah, I mean, um, Bethesda have been a great partner with us. The, they're really helpful when it comes to like getting assets or working on programs from marketing team. So it's been a great pleasure to work with those guys. And obviously, on a game as important to kind of establishing Nintendo Switch as having great third-party support, then Skyrim is kind of right up there. You know, it was it speaks volumes that when we did the initial Nintendo Switch trailer, probably yeah. what 
a, just a year ago now, yep. that Skyrim was one of those games. You know, that's the confidence level that we had in Bethesda and that Bethesda had in Nintendo Switch. Was that something, and I remember the response at E3 when the Zelda costume was sort of presented for the, I, yeah. I was one of those people going, oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I think there's video of me doing that as a matter of fact. Uh, but was that something where it's like really affirming to go out and, and recognize that chasing that relationship and making that thing happen? Because it wasn't out of nowhere surprise, but it, was that validating for everybody at Nintendo? Yeah, and I think it, it's it's for us. It's more about creating something that's appealing to fans, you know. So yeah. fans can have that beautiful, incredible, expansive Skyrim experience, but they can dress as pretty much as Link if they want to. Yeah. So you know, it's that typical Nintendo touch to it, and it also is something which makes the Skyrim experience on Nintendo Switch that bit more exclusive. Like you know, if you want to you. I was on a plane last week and I was very happily playing Super Mario Odyssey yeah. and it was fantastic. You know, I got home and I just plugged it back into the dock and I continued on my game. Skyrim's the same, but if, you know, it's a little bit more interactive as well. So you can take the Joy-Cons off and you can use them to like draw an arrow or a sword and shield. So again, it's that kind of that unique Nintendo aspect of playing Skyrim. They didn't just port the game, they kind of looked at how can we make this suitable for the Nintendo gamer, and they've done a fantastic job. It wasn't a surprise to me that Skyrim, and you know, games like Doom as well, you know, those games, they look fantastic, you play them on the big screen, and then suddenly you're playing them portable mode, and it's like, you're not playing a mobile game anymore, you're just playing a full game, but it's mobile. That's been the other trip too. I've already taken a look at Doom as well, and it does run really well, but it's also an incredibly, mature experience yeah. was that something that uh, was an attractive proposition for oh yeah, de yeah definitely i mean it was you know the game the guys at panic button uh, doing the nintendo switch version they they looked at this not from a technical element they weren't they weren't given targets and had to match them mm -hmm. whenever they were playing the game and testing the game and building it their one consideration was is this fun right and you know they've got that same twitch gameplay they've got the frame rate they've got the the immediacy of doom and they certainly got the gore. You can really see the power of the platform when you take it out of the dock and you're playing the exact same experience. Is that where you think Doom really shines as a, as a portable escape like that? I think, it, I mean, you know, to me, I, I've played it and it works well on both. Maybe you're playing it on the big screen and then your kids come home. You know, you immediately, you don't want to let them watch it because they can it's watch not cartoons. suitable. They yeah. can watch You can sit next to them. Demons. Exactly. Yes. You can hide it from them, Yes. but you could still have that same great mature experience that you had 10 minutes ago on the big screen. So good stuff with the Bethesda partnership, but I want to get back to some RPG talk here for a second because you dressed up like a knight for us today, which is it's awesome. It's Bring Your Ancestor to Work Day. Oh, perfect. That's great. Uh, you were Your ancestor was a knight. Yeah, I hope so. Okay. How's the uh, English accent going? It's pretty good. Not Convincing. Too, not to Australian? Not to Australian today, no. <laughs> uh, okay, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is from Monolith, yep. and what I know about Monolith, they make massive games. Oh, huge games. Yes. Like 100 hours is kind of your starting point for these type of games. And one of the big differences between this Xenoblade Chronicles title and the previous one is it's a much deeper story than the one we've seen before. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that the developers did in order to try and kind of allow you to get through that story more quickly is they've really streamed down the battles. They've refined the battles, but they've streamed down the menus as well. So it's a more refined kind of streamlined game for you to play. Okay, I got you. Well, the, uh, Monolith worked on Xenoblade Chronicles X for yep. the Wii U, which is one of the best games for that platform. Yep. It was amazing. And, and a beautiful looking game as well. And that's, yes. that's one of the things I think that really makes these games stand out because they do, like particularly the, the Wii U version, really did this fantastic job of pushing the title visually and mm -hmm. pushing the system. And what we've seen from Xenoblade Chronicles 2 is, again, it's another beautiful, beautiful system. Awesome. And what they used this time was the team, uh, they stepped out of game design and they actually got like very classic, famous anime designers to come up with the environments to give it that slightly non-game feel but more anime feel and you know when you play the game it really does stand out as something different oh man i'm so excited monolith also contributed on the legend of zelda breath of the wild to help build up that huge they world. did yeah yeah you know for me games like this and open world games for me it's not necessarily just about the the game it's about the exploration yeah for sure you know i play games that create these beautiful worlds and i just want to walk yeah you know i've played games a few years ago and all i want to do is get on a horse yeah yeah yeah. and that's what i'm looking forward to do when i get back to my steed <laughs> this evening <laughs> will you be wearing this when you're playing xenoblade chronicles 2 i have to say yes but that might not be true <laughs> okay <laughs> i'm in let's go to elysium 
And it feels like these games are so massive that you're basically uncovering stuff forever. Yep. And there's more DLC also for Breath of the Wild for those that have already put in 300 hours into that game. Uh, but w w tell us about this, uh, the Champions Ballad. Yep, so that's a new single player element. Like you say, as if the game wasn't big enough and now we're gonna give you another chunk of single player. Yeah. And I remember listening to the developers talk uh, in interviews that they did and they said that, you know, the Zelda world which they created was so big that why not use that world to create more stories? And that's yeah. what we've done in the expansion pass. All right, well, let's stick on this uh, RPG theme here. The other big release that you've had recently is Fire Emblem Warriors, and you guys uh, partnered with the Mega Force on uh, the Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors. Is this a similar kind of experience, or is it a little bit different because Fire Emblem is a bit different? Yeah, it's it's a similar experience, but it's kind of think of it as almost like you know you put Fire Emblem and the Warrior series into a blender, and this is what you came out with. So you've got... Sounds messy. <laughs> yeah, sounds awesome. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you've got the strategy element of Fire Emblems, but you've got that real immediate battle element of the Warrior series. So, you know, there's so much history in the Fire, em Fire Emblem series, yes. so we've been able to revisit some of the older titles and really kind of create like a greatest hits of all these playable characters. Yeah. Put them in this gameplay where they wouldn't normally meet, and then have them use this wonderful gameplay style from the the warrior series you know we still keep the basics like we still have the weapons triangle so that's very very familiar that's great we've still got the some strategic elements so at the start of each game you could decide where to place your heroes and then uh, we've still got permadeath because you know fire emblem isn't the same without permadeath that's awesome yeah and I, I guess it's it's a pretty cool way to play this game because for 25 years 30 years you've been making fire emblem games with yeah. these characters with awesome weapons but now you get to have a Twitch experience with them. You yeah, exactly. Them. This one, you may only need to play 10 minutes yeah. and you can get some progress. And in that 10 minutes, who knows how many of the enemy you will have taken out <laughs> in a loud, large, brutal fashion. That's all the more reason to hurry to Ryoma. So when you think back on the 2017 releases, what do you think gamers should take away for, for what's hit the Nintendo Switch this year? I think for me, you know, it's the sheer volume of quality games that we've released. It's mm -hmm. not just that we've released a lot of games, we've released a ton of really, really high quality games. I and mean, diverse too. Yeah, the, yeah, you've got fighting, you've got driving, you've got adventure, you've got the action adventure of Doom and games like that. So there is there are games in there for everybody. There's there's the eShop titles if you don't want to spend too much money. There's Zelda if you want to lose 200 hours. There's <laughs> Super Mario Odyssey if you want to lose another 200 hours. Spend 200 hours very wisely, you mean. Exactly. Yes. What, what better ways can you spend that? <laughs> All right, well, 2018 is almost upon us. Yep. And I know that every Switch owner out there that's you know bought one when it launched or is about to get one for the holidays is wondering what what's in store for them in the future. Can you tell us about some of the titles in 2018? I know you can't reveal it at all yet, but what's coming up? Well, we've got Kirby is coming out, the, you know, the first uh, Kirby game for Nintendo Switch. Mm -hmm. That's a ton of fun. It's four players, so you know, all of us could sit together and play. We just need the four Joy-Con, and so that, that's a great fun, and that's coming out fairly soon. Something I don't think people sort of recognize about Kirby enough is the versatility of the character and all of the different permutations that, that, of games that come yeah. out with Kirby. Always cool, always innovative. Yeah, who knew a pink circle could be that, I know, <laughs> that <right>? useful? <laughs> Some other great titles coming out, which yeah. um, sh I am looking forward to sharing with you soon. We know that Metroid is also coming up. You and I have talked about yep. that before. You can't tell me anything. We, you've tried to talk I've about it before. Let's, uh, let's be clear. We have not talked about I, it. I work for you guys. I'm trying to find out. But we know that Wolfenstein 2 is also coming to the Switch as well. Yeah, that's a game we're really looking forward to. Again, it's a mature game. It's a very mature topic. As very well. mature, yeah. And, you know, it's another example of that great partnership that we've got with Bethesda. We've got faith that those guys are going to make something special from what is looking to be a, a pretty special game out there. Can't wait to see how that runs on the Switch next year. Congratulations on this incredible year for Thank Nintendo. You. It's and, been a uh, pleasure. It, you, you've made a lot of us very, very happy, and I know you're going to make a lot more people very happy this uh, this holiday. It's the, the cliche is it's what we do it for, but it is, you know, Nintendo's ethos is putting smiles on people's faces. And... I mean, <laughs> <laughs> It doesn't speak better than what I'm wearing. Very good. He wore it for us today. Isn't yeah. that nice? Thanks, Andrew. All right. Thanks, Great to brother. see you again.